During the design of one of these buildings, you have to do what's called a water balance. And it's, it's like a checking account in the sense of here's all our incomes and here's all our outgoes. And you want those to ideally match, um, if not have a little bit more on the incoming side. And so you look at what's the rainfall, how much are we going to get from condensate, and then what are the uses, how much are we going to need for the cooling tower, how much are we going to need for toilets, hose bibs, PV wash, things like that. In the grand scheme of things, not every single month is going to play out perfectly. So in the winter months, we don't need as much landscape. You're not going to use as much cooling tower water. So we'll be storing a lot more water, and that's why we have the tanks that we have. So we have 90,000 gallons worth of site storage out on that fire road as you come in, and then we have 5,000 gallon tank in the garage. So we try to store that water um, not each month, you know, but what isn't used in January can carry over to February. Some of the use goes away, some of it's made back up, but again, it carries over to the next month. And that allows you to extend that rainy period further into the drier months. And if you look at San Diego, the annual rainfall is a, a U-shaped distribution. So you get a lot in the winter months, and then in the summer there's very little, picks up again as winter comes. And that's great, we can use that water for the landscape and whatnot, but during the summer months, what do you do for water? So what we did is, is we captured the condensate off the air handlers. So when they are cooling, they're pulling moisture out of the airstream as well. We capture that condensate too. So when you look at the, the rainfall and then you add the condensate, which is going to be largest in the summer months, you actually get a reasonable um, monthly inflow of water that can be reused. And so all the landscape water will come from that reuse system. Uh, it's actually piped to uh, fill the toilets and to the cooling tower makeup. All that water consumption that typically is just domestic water, so it's potable water that you would drink, why put it into your cooling tower, right? It, there's energy and cost associated with making that water uh, clean to that tertiary level and then uh, to be used, and basically you're putting it down the toilet. It's a combination of all those things. So you start with making sure you have the low flow fixtures to start with. Um, the, the vendor folks were comfortable with waterless urinals. Some places aren't. So for the ones that aren't, we recommend the pint, uh, which is a very low flow urinal. So you, you start with that to limit the consumption side. You want to aggregate and collect as much water on the uh, incoming side. And then look at ways to offset, because again, the two biggest water uses in a typical lab uh, are going to be your cooling tower demand and then your landscape demand. And so for us, you know, even though we run our cooling tower a lot, because that's our primary source of cooling, uh, we run it at night. And so there actually isn't as much evaporation uh, that you would have during, as you would during the day to reject the same amount of heat. So even there, by virtue of running the tower at night, we're using less water than we would if we had run it during the day. So it's all those factors combined play a role in terms of how the building works. And that's why, again, you can't look at it just, you know, okay, we're going to do this one piece and suddenly we're going to gain all this. The architecture has to work because we have to be able to collect it. So the rainwater has to be able to run to a point that we can collect. On the water conservation, we not only have the rainwater that feeds the rainwater system, we're also using the air handler condensate that then goes into the rainwater system. And that, that, that accounts for 10 or 20 percent of the water that we are collecting, which is good. We do have an overflow. If there's a huge rain and the tanks get full, then um, the overflow does go into the storm drain. We needed that for code reasons, and I don't think we'll end up using that very often. But that rainwater cistern then feeds the landscape, the toilets, uh, photovoltaic system wash, which we do occasionally. Um, cooling towers need additional makeup water. And so we use all that. The, all that system is backed up by the potable water. So after the rain, and if there's not very much condensate um, during the summer months, uh, potable water will be um, backing up and providing water uh, to these same systems. Any of the outflow is either um, it go, either goes to the sewer or in the case of the landscaping, um, it is uh, stored 
and can be uh, recollected and reused again.